You are listening to the Effective Statistician Podcast, a weekly podcast with Alexander Schacht and Benjamin Pieske designed to help you reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients without becoming overwhelmed by work. This is episode number 71, Make Your Organization and Yourself Outsourcing Proof. We have an upcoming webinar about leadership. Go to theeffectivestatistician.com slash leadership webinar and sign up for the webinar there. We are still working on the last details and uh, you'll see there very soon the final title. So uh, maybe by the time this episode goes live, it's already finalized. But um, the last webinars were really, really awesome. We have we had quite good attendances and uh, lots of very, very good feedback. So you surely don't want to miss uh, this one that's coming up soon. So just go to theeffectivestatistician.com slash leadership webinar. So this episode is about outsourcing and lots of people are afraid that they lose their job uh, made redundant because their job is outsourced. Um, and that can even happen if you're working in a zero because the job that you're doing is outsourced to another vendor. And um, We'll talk a little bit about that as well in, in this episode. But what can you do about it? It's actually quite a lot that you can do about it. And you'll learn about these tips and tricks and um, uh, how you can actually add value to your organization. And I'm pretty sure that will be quite insightful. So have fun listening to this uh, podcast episode. This podcast is created in association with PSI, a global membership organization dedicated to leading and promoting best practice and industry initiatives. Join PSI today to further develop your statistical capabilities with access to the awesome video on demand content library, free registration to all PSI webinars and much, much more. The reduced rate is just £20 per year for non-high income countries and £95 per year for high income countries. Visit the PSI website at psiweb.org to learn more about PSI activities and become a PSI member today. This show was created in association with PSI. Thanks for listening. Please visit theeffectivestatistician.com to find the show notes and learn more about our podcast to boost your career as a statistician in the health sector. And don't forget to sign up for the webinar there. And so in the end, that will help you to reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients. So go on, just be an effective statistician. Welcome to another episode of The Effective Statistician. And this time, it's again Benjamin and myself. Hi, Benjamin. How are you doing? Hi, Alexander. Well, it's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, yeah, re yeah. We, record, we record this session at the, at the time when we have like 35 to 40 degrees, depending on where you are in Germany. So it yeah. feels a little bit warm. Yeah. But it's already close to 10 o'clock. In the evening, well, our little ladies didn't want to call asleep, so <laughs> we are a little bit delayed uh, with the recording tonight. But um, for you, you can listen to it anytime, anywhere. Uh, maybe it's freezing at your end at the moment. <laughs> the aircon car. So the topic today is actually... Um, a pretty interesting one, given that Benjamin works at a CRO and I'm working in a pharma organization. And uh, the topic today is really about outsourcing. Well, lots of people, at least in the pharma organizations, uh, may fear that their work is outsourced and by that they're made redundant and they need to will lose their jobs and, and things like that. Of course, need to cut to CRO. Yeah. 
that, that, that will that could happen, yeah. And then there's cases where you know complete um, stats organizations have been uh, outsourced, or you know, and and or moved completely into uh, CROs. So if you think of the uh, the former Höchst stats organizations that uh, spin out and formed the Kofian. And so there is, you know, pretty big CROs that um, basically set their origin story, so to say, or uh, that, you know, that says, you know, a person left the organization and um, took a whole department with them, basically sold the services back to the original company. So lots of, lots of different things happening. Um, and of course, it's great if you, if you're in the driving seat of that uh, and you're not kind of driven <laughs> to, uh, out of the organization. But um, yeah, that's yeah. the topic of today. Yeah, that's so, so it's a little bit about, you know, how to, how to work or how to make, um, you know, make the company aware of what you're doing, of how you're doing it. So basically to show off a little bit and see, you know, really what, what is the value of um, having the service that you're providing in-house um, but again and the other side you know CEOs are waiting <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know um, let's have a little bit of a you know bigger look into this there is actually industries where this outsourcing was really kind of taken to the extreme so if you for example look into the car industry automotive industry they you know used to be very integrated companies and then they outsourced and see they outsourced it to to suppliers and these suppliers further outsourced and then third line outsourcing and fourth line outsourcing up to very very super specialized companies uh, that were then able to deliver to Lots of lots of different vendors, and you know where you may find that they, you know, since supply nearly everybody, mm -hmm. um, but since they're super specialized, and uh, yeah, um, but the same yeah. actually may happen in in the in our area as well. I mean, just imagine there's a pharma company working with a different pharma company, and they're outsourcing to a CRO who has sub providers um, third-party providers for example in in other areas so basically it's up to four levels easily what i know from my experience yeah. that um, where we have um, outsourcing to outsourcing to outsourcing so it's real life also for <laughs> us hmm. and of course um what i have seen over time is that there's a kind of Yeah, that goes in waves. So, so sometimes there's a wave where everything is outsourced and then there's a wave where everything is insourced again. And um, if you're a little bit longer with the industry, you probably have seen these waves come and go. I think the, the key for um, us individual statisticians, for you as a listener to notice, is, is what can you actually do about it? So, so what can you do about it? What can you help your organization do about it so that you're not outsourced? And I think that primarily goes down to um, bringing specific value to the organization. And that is also seen by the organization. I think these are two different things. I think very often we, we do amazing things and never talk about it. And um, then, you know, nobody high up knows about it. And if they don't know about it, well, you're just a number or potentially just a number in, in, in a numbers game and just a kind of cost line somewhere in a spreadsheet. And that's it. Yeah, I think we, we had some topics around this in previous um, episodes where how to present um, yourself, how to appear. I mean, I'm not talking about like, uh, you know, this, this topical marketing, you know, where you just pre uh, present yourself uh, without value or with, you know, not, not the value that you would supposed to uh, see, but it's really about how to present yourself in a group in you know, in meetings uh, to your um, supervisor and above and how to work with them. So this is there. We, I think we touched this quite a bit, um, you know, where, where the, um, where the 
internal marketing for yourself. So what value you bring to the organization is shown and um, how you can bring yourself into the position of be of everyone or like the nearer environment of yourself is aware what you're doing and uh, that you are there and not a single number. Yeah. And I think the key thing is that this is about things that are not easily uh, outsourceable. But I don't know whether that's a word, but um, I'm pretty sure you understand, that, uh, you know, activities that um, you can do because you're working in the organization and you're not coming from outside of the organization. Because, of course, working in the organization, you have stronger networks. You may have deeper insights into uh, how the organization actually works. You have deeper insights maybe into the um, indication, better have a connection with um, the customers of your organization, you know, whether that be regulatory customers or um, uh, physicians or patients. And um, so if you are able to provide value to them, then you provide value to the organization. And um, so that is uh, an important point in it. But of course, what's also an important point in it is cost. There needs to be a good relationship between the cost and the innovation. So I've seen, you know, the, the, that the higher people climb up the ladder and the more promotions they get, of course, they need to even more show their value because they have a higher price tag associated with, with their work. So the more you're climbing up, the more pressure it is on you to show the value of your, uh, the, the value, the specific value that you bring to the uh, organization being an internal statistician. Yeah, I think it's it's a very, very um, good point, but very difficult to define what the value or the costs are. Um, especially if you, um, especially because outsourcing to a CRO usually is quite easy to um, to measure. So you would say, you know, you do it for a certain price, one delivery or one output costs this, uh, plus a meeting and so on. So you have per study project, you have, um, have a value, uh, um, your costs that are associated with the CRO. On the one side, on the other side, if you do this internally and, and try to value or try to find out what the costs are, I think this is, um, this is difficult. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any ideas or any suggestions on how to, um, compare the numbers or how to bring a person's, uh, costs into, into the game? Yeah, so there's of course lots of different problems associated with it. You know, as a, as an internal um, worker, you have all the overhead costs, of course. You know, kind of it starts with kind of your your own PC, or you know, goes up to the HR representatives that you know deals with you, or the rooms that you're sitting in, or whatever. So. Um, these may be, you know, on average be yeah, easy to calculate. Um, but I think what's much more difficult is these uh, things like oh, when you're sitting in the organization, there's another kind of very often with cost associated to, to, to do extra, any extra work. So, so, you know, it's much more difficult to push back and say, uh, we want to have don't know, this an additional set of analyses or whatsoever. Um, when people basically think it's for free when it's done internally. Mm. Yeah. Whereas if it's outsourced, of course, there's usually a clearly defined price tag to it. And then it's about, do we have the budget for it? Should we fight for the budget for it? And, you know, um, People have a little bit more serious considerations about it, but I think the um, the key thing is uh, you need to be um, aware about 
what it what are these costs and you need to have the feeling about okay if we would outsource that how much would that cost actually so that you can have these discussions internally yeah and um i think one one important piece is of course um internally you know you don't have um these formal interfaces very often and that makes things a little bit easier um, for, for people to, to hand over work to you. Um, but that shouldn't be kind of the only benefit <laughs> that you can show when you work internally. But is it just, just um, again, just one sentence back is, you know, you said that, that uh, you know, about the costs and how to discuss the costs. But do you think a statistician is usually in the, in the, um, in the position of, you know, being involved in such discussions? Isn't this a decision where, you know, about costs and how to present costs and how to calculate the costs for it? Isn't this in the, in the management usually piece of part of management? I, I think as a statistician, you should at least have a feeling for the ballpark number. So I mean for, for yourself, not necessarily for discussions, but just to have an idea of yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, so that you can say, okay, you know, that, you know, don't, would take me maybe, you know, a, w a week of work and additional kind of, don't know, one man month of, of a analyst in addition. And that would amount to, don't know, X numbers of euros or dollars or whatsoever. Yeah. And um, so that people get a little bit of feeling of what are the costs Of course, you can also, you know, come up with, oh, okay, we can work on this, but, but then we can't do these kind of nice things and present it as opportunity costs. But I think that is something, you know, it's a, it's a different perspective to have on the work. Yeah. And, and it's a work perspective that, for example, management consultants would have if they come into your organization and decide, you know, uh, or, advise your management on how to streamline your organization, for example. Yeah. So they would go into these kind of discussions with the people. And of course, that is not something that is stable also over time as well. Yeah. So, so something that, you know, was quite innovative and great uh, today, maybe completely standard in two or three years. Um, uh, not that quickly, but yes, maybe in 10 years. <laughs> <It depends. laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, the, the, the key thing is uh, also you can't stop. Yeah, because if you stop uh, being innovative, if you stop improving, is chances are that, you know, your work gets more and more standardized. And the more standardized it becomes, the more easily it is to outsource things. Yeah, but I think it's it's also a discussion. I mean, this is this is just a general, um, you know, general thoughts that we have now. But it, it it deeply depends on on the type of organization and environment that you are working on. So, for example, if um, you know, as we said, there's there are things that are difficult to outsource. For example, um, the internal communication, the the internal the the commitment to the to the product and and the development of the protocol of the strategy um, with regards to statistics over you know bringing a component to to life and and that is that is something that is you know you can't you can't outsource so yeah. that's that needs to be something in house so if you're in this in such a position and um, most of the other workers outsource anyway then you know you don't even have to think about costs because i mean not in, in the meaning of uh, in in the fear of being outsourced yourself um i mean there there might be rare occasions that i saw where, for example where the farmer statistician was a freelancer being brought in house Let's call it in-house, even though it's not, it didn't feel like being in-house. But, um, and that usually, that usually doesn't work very well. And yeah, so, so I think the, the key is we are speaking here really about outsourcing in, in a way that, um, outsourcing to another company. So of course you can always kind of, bring in freelancers and sometimes you have these, you know, long-term freelancers that work within the companies for years and years and years. 
it's, it's more insourcing than outsourcing, I would call it. <laughs> yeah. No, what, what I was going to say actually is that that this it, it doesn't work very well. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work very well for the company and usually not for the outsourcing piece of the CRO because the um, the connection there's a lack of connection between. So that's why I think you know if you're working in house in in the company as a statistician and and uh, you know being as a project statistician let's say so this is I don't think there's a you know that that any company at the moment would be think about outsourcing this position wouldn't it. Yep. Yeah. Well. Well. Un unless you go really extreme and basically outsource a complete development. Yeah. So that you say, okay, we give this, you know, development up to let's say proof of concept. We give it, you know, to to an organization. Here's the money. Off you go. Just do it. And when you're done, come back, and then we may consider to to buy, buy the product back. Yeah, something like that. Um, that's also happening, but but that's a completely different game. Yeah, yeah. it's a different. It's a full outsourcing, really. Yeah. The other thing I think this kind of mindset of making yourself outsourcing proof is to go through your task list a little bit more aggressively and think about what it is it that only you can do, and what are the pieces that maybe someone else could do better, cheaper, faster. So you mean to basically already divide the work into pieces that are not or difficult to outsource and others that are yeah. saving you a lot of work? Yeah, because that is the, the other piece that you can think of yourself. Yeah, so, so um, try to kind of, you know, gradually over time, get rid of the work where, you know, that's easily outsourceable and, you know, delegate that to vendors and, you know, build up more and more time where you work on those things that are less outsourceable. You know, exactly the things that we just, just uh, talked about, you know, discussion of yes. design, coming up with a strategy, innovative ideas, uh, building customer relationships, uh, these kind of things. Yeah, and I think if you if you find things that that you think are potential being worth being outsourced, um, you should ask the questions to why this is the case, and and yeah, either really, I mean, maybe actively try to outsource them, or could also be that that they need to be improved because it's not they're not running the way or as effective as they should be running so yeah. that is you know this this would be things to consider to um to change to improve yourself um uh, and then to make yourself outsourcing proof yeah so but basically to go through the steps can i eliminate it can i automate it or can i delegate slash outsource it yeah yeah um One important thing about that is, of course, you need to have a good discussion with your supervisor about these things uh, as well. So that he, you know, understands or has has the same understanding of, you know, why certain things are better being outsourced and why certain things are um, better done in-house. Uh, so there should be a good alignment there, yeah. Yeah, I think, again, I think it's, you know, maybe, um, uh, you know, I don't want to make anyone panic here. <laughs> so <laughs> may just not be a topic. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, I think, especially not going to your supervisor, just, you know, hey, listen, I, <laughs> I made myself, you know, I made myself outsourced, by the way. Yeah, you, you don't want to come with, well, these 80% of the, the tasks that I'm doing, actually someone as a CRO can do faster, quick, quicker and cheaper and, and whatsoever. Yeah. That's not the goal. I mean, that's really not the goal of this conversation. It's really about, you know, first of all, it's if this, is a topic in the company then it's worth you know having more thoughts about it and also um, if it's not a topic in the company then it's worth having some thoughts around it and checking you know whether 
things can be approved or you know what what pieces are more uh you know safer and also to make make the environment your your company aware of what you're doing and um, just increasing your your own value so that are natural things but then you maybe shouldn't talk to your supervisor about all sorts yeah of yeah well i think it's it's a gradual thing yeah so, so yes. one task at a time so um Just, you know, some thoughts about questions you can ask yourself uh, to find out about what are the things that um, are really your unique, not outsourceable uh, um, contributions. And you can think about that is, you know, um, from, from your business partner's perspective, you know, would your business partner care if that task is not done by you anymore? By someone else. Um, is that, you know, would they even notice? Or maybe extreme, might they be, be if, even better off? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think, um, thinking from, if, if they don't, if they don't notice, you did something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it could be, you know, that, uh, your, your, the task is outsourced and you, you're only left with the, with the oversight. Yeah. So, mm. so that could be. Uh, could be the yeah, case. Yeah. So, so, but I think it's it's also you know looking through that and and checking uh, whether you like doing these kind of things that are key for internal things, uh, for key for internal uh, statisticians, or whether you actually prefer to work on those tasks that you know maybe are easier to outsource. Could be the case as well. Mm. Yeah. So that is then maybe you know a hint in terms of what is your career development? Is that really something within the current company? Or maybe you're actually better off in another company. Yeah. So so I've seen um people that, you know, there was a strategy change within the company where um it was more pressure on outsourcing and there was just clear discussion, okay, these are the tasks that we want to outsource. These are the tasks that we want to keep internally. And so one person I know of uh, said, well, then I think I'll leave the company because I like doing these tasks that you want to outsource, which is fine. Yeah, I, I think, um, but it's great to have, you know, uh, a thought about these things and rather than, let's say, be them done to you, be proactive and intentional about it. That's, I think, mm. the key, key summary. Yeah. yeah, and I think in the, in the example that you just mentioned, I mean, why I, I know people that, that um, you know, that started just their own company mm -hmm. or a freelancer. So um, just, I mean, it, it did happen not, uh, well, in, in some ways it was, you know, by... By accident, let's say, and others it was, um, you know, by a free, free choice. So there, um, there are always options, especially for statisticians. I think this is a, it's a, it's an excellent time for statisticians to, to find the spot, to find the, the way of, uh, where you, what you want to do, uh, where you want to do it, for whom or for yourself. Um, these are all questions that can be asked easily. And um, so, yeah, maybe after after all, you say, okay, might be might be a good way of doing something else. Yeah. Maybe you are so niching down on a specific thing that you can do amazingly well, better than, you know, nearly everybody else in the world. But there's, you know, not enough work for the specific task in your company. And you would be better off saying to the company, well, I want to help you with this, but I also want to help other companies with that. And, you know, just economically, it makes better sense if I start as a freelancer or start my own, hmm. you know, company and offer this as a productized service. Yeah. So, so I think it's, it's good to have kind of these reflections on, on your day to day work and, and how, You know, your work environment might look completely different, maybe better, um, if, if you, uh, think about these kind of things. So I personally really worked very, very hard over the years to get rid of all the things that I thought I'm not pretty good at. And there's lots of zeros that can do that much better. 
and um, delegated that and delegated that and delegated that. And um, it only, actually it boosted my promotions, I think, because I think it's, you know, I was spending more time on the things that I love, the things that I'm good at, and the things that were highly visible. For me, Yep. So maybe we should rename this episode <laughs> into how how to reassess your own value or something. <laughs> okay, very good. No so with that, we are actually having a, a little bit of a shorter episode. Actually, not shorter. It's actually in our kind of uh, target time. <laughs> Aim for targets. <laughs> so um, thanks a lot for listening. And thank you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.